Good evening, everyone. Such a privilege to be in your homes again. Thank you for receiving us, and we hope that you will enjoy the time. Let us enjoy praise and worship for a moment. When my mind is like a battlefield, and my heart is overcome by fear, and hope seems like a ship that's lost at sea. My enemies on every side, and I'm tempted to run and hide. Your gentle whisper reaches out to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you that we can open our hearts to your word today so that we will be enlightened and enriched and grow in your name. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we are talking about how to know your season, know your season and how to dress appropriate. As we are approaching winter, often we're not sure what exactly to wear because it's still cool in the mornings and in the evenings, but during the daytime it's still quite warm. So what do we do? We carry around umbrellas and jerseys just for in case. There is no certainty what the weather will bring. With the, uh, with the same unsure mindset, we sometimes also attempt a day in our spiritual seasons. That should I, what should I do? What, what should I pray? Should I pray more or should I just be quiet? There are many more questions similar to these. And that is why we must, throughout every season in our lives, maintain a strong and immovable bond and relationship with our God, our Father. Focusing on what He is preparing for us and relying on His strength to get us on the other side of the mountain is absolutely essential. There is not always an answer to all our questions, but in Him we have the confidence that we will never face anything alone. With this confidence, we can trust his guidance and to show and enlighten our spirit. Every season we face is a process of growth. Some may feel that the growing process is too tough to bear, but God is our source and we stand in him alone. It is easier said than done, I know. But I would like to advise you today Know your season and know what to wear. Know what to wear as your life grows into a beautiful, strong and established tree that will bear good fruit. This way, you know you'll be dressed for success. We would rather not wear a jacket in the summertime to the beach, would we? This is the same in the spiritual world and God shows us exactly what to wear during every season in Ephesians 6, where it speaks of the armor. We will learn from these various items how it resembles the image and the presence of Jesus. We're reading from verse 14, where it says, Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. This righteousness talks about who you are in Christ. Tightening his righteousness to your very core and being tr strengthened through his glory and gift of righteousness. Truth is who God is. And ultimately, the truth is what sets us free from bondage and the wiles of the enemy. In verse 15 we read, For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. This refers to the stable and solid foundation we have in Christ, standing on his word and promises for us through every unknown season we may face. The gospel of Jesus Christ and the true peace that transcends all human understanding. Whether you are going through a storm or whether you are running a good race. Either way, the shoes of peace will carry you and God is with you wherever you place your feet. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of, feel, of faith, which, with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. Faith is here represented by the shield. A shield that you have in your hand. To cover, to protect, and to move around as you see that the enemy is trying to attack you. Bear in mind, having it in your hand shows that we are able to use our faith more and more once we get moving into the di right direction with the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the complete faith in God. This shield keeps out the winter cold during those difficult times. It protects us from the onslaughts of the enemy while fighting the good fight of faith given to us when, where we can consciously give our everything because of his love and grace given to us first. 
In verse 17 we read, Put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the sword of God. This verse is the one that keeps it together, so to, so to speak. If it was not for our salvation, we would not even be able to attempt any mission that came our way. This helmet speaks of protecting your mind from evil entering. And because we have salvation, we know to renew our minds daily with the word of God, to be assured our ways are protected and guided. The scripture instructs us to take this word. It refers to our salvation with the Holy Spirit at work within us. The word of God that is the ultimate guidelines for us to overcome every mountain and survive every valley. Come rain or sunshine, it is supplied by the Spirit of God, the word being inspired by him to enlighten us and to teach us how to use the sword to encourage and to defend. Verse 18, and pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. The scripture concludes the whole instruction on what to wear and how to use these items and concludes it by instructing prayer as such an imperative action that it is count as part of your defense against the enemy. The success of your warfare will be supported in large by consistent prayer. Using this in every season you face, every part in your life, no matter your age, no matter your shortcomings, your accomplishments, or what you are planning on to do. No matter where you come from, what you've done, whatever you are up to. Prayer is essential to keep your boat afloat. One of our greatest gifts is prayer. Communication with a loving Father and the creator of the universe. For prayer is a, is a true spiritual act, leaning into the presence of God, receiving his great, great guidance and his grace and standing well able to claim our promised land. By receiving all the wonderful things God has set before us, we acknowledge him as our Father, the giver of all good things. He sees our heartache. He sees our joyful cheer. But most of all, he sees that we are laying every downfall and also every victory at his feet. Don't be dismayed if your winter is taking longer than you think you can handle. You will conquer your enemy. You will get to the place where you can rest for a while. But keep on fighting in the meantime. Keep your head up and know that God has got your back. He goes before us and he covers us all around. In this thankful attitude of knowing that God has his best interest at heart for us, let us take the bread and break it saying thank you Jesus that we can celebrate victory by knowing what you have done for us on the cross it is done you gave your life for us so that we may live with you in eternity drinking from the cup that represents the blood of Jesus Christ poured out for the forgiveness of our sins we thank you, our Heavenly Father, for what Jesus has done for us. Removing every burden, every sickness, every trial, and replacing it with your grace and your love forever. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and giving me a life to live according to your will and to your word, which is powerful and perfect. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. Thank you for the guidelines that you set out for us to follow. Open our hearts and our minds to receive it, Jesus. And thank you that you are Lord, and we can just acknowledge you as our Father. 
We praise your name and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.